Can a USB flash drive wear out? So I'm going to come clean with you on the question that I'm about to read to you. It's not a question that somebody asked. Quite literally, I was with a friend some time ago and he and his wife turned out to be doing what this question talks about. And I commented on the situation and you'll see why in a moment. Here's the question. I have a database application that I share between multiple computers. We keep the database itself on a USB flash drive and simply move that drive to the other computers as needed. The database is never copied off the flash drive. We just update it in place. Seems very simple. A friend of mine, that'd be me, just told me that I was asking for trouble. He said something about flash drives wearing out and that sooner or later, probably sooner, the data on my flash drive would become corrupt. Is that true? Do these USB drives actually wear out? Yes, yes, they do. I strongly recommend that if you're using a flash drive in a situation like I've described, you back it up sooner rather than later and more frequently than you think you might need. And I'd also recommend rethinking about how you're sharing your data. Inexpensive flash memory as the kind used in USB thumb drives or flash drives as they're called, uh, memory sticks, memory cards, those kinds of things. It's very cool, but it's also very inexpensive and it wears out. So what does the flash and flash memory even mean? It actually refers to how the technology at least used to, it may have been updated, but it at least used to work this way how the technology would actually store things in flash memory. What would happen is the computer or the external device would send a bunch of data into the flash memory, and then it would basically send a signal, a flash that said, okay, all that stuff that's in there, remember that. I take it as something like a flash on a camera, right? You've got this point in time that the camera is taking a picture of that is illuminated by the flash. That's the point in time, that fraction of a microsecond that the flash actually hits. Same kind of thing, at least conceptually, when it comes to how flash memory is, or at least used to be implemented. So the problem, of course, is that you can only flash memory so many times. You can read it a bunch, reading doesn't cause any problems. But this operation of sending some data to the memory and then flashing it so that it's remembered, that is a limited number of times it can be done. And it's limited for each individual bit in the flash memory. What that means, of course, is that you don't know where necessarily the problem may occur. It depends on you know, the minute little differences perhaps in, in manufacturing, how many times that bit has been written to as compared to this other bit. It's random and because it's random, there's no predicting. And because there's no predicting, you got to plan on it happening eventually. Now, many things have been improved when it comes to flash memory in recent years. There are two things that are happening that at least they don't eliminate this problem. They reduce the frequency of it actually impacting you. One is error correction. And what that means is that rather than just writing a little bit of data, they write a little bit more and that data can be used mathematically to recover should like a bit or two or some of the data become corrupt because the flash memory has worn out. The other is something called wear leveling. Remember, I just said that it depends a lot on how often this particular bit may have been written to. Well, one of the ways that uh, flash memory can sometimes compensate for that is by making sure that even though that conceptually you are writing information in the same logical place all the time, you are under the hood, it's getting moved around. It's getting this time it's written to that cell, this next time it's getting written to that cell, even though they all appear as the same location on the so-called hard disk that a flash memory typically represents. So where leveling is one of the ways that, again, they prevent any one place on the flash memory from becoming uh, the problem because you're writing to it all the time. Because 
they spread it out. They spread the load. They spread the wear across the entire device. Unfortunately, what that means is that when your device starts to fail, it means that the entire device is pretty close to the edge and you really want to be prepared for that. So those are the kinds of things that uh, are in place to help protect you or at least put off the inevitable demise of your flash memory. Now, I want to make a special comment about databases because the scenario that's being described here is probably the worst case usage scenario for flash memory. Honestly, if you use an SD card in your camera or you're using it in a voice recorder or any of those kinds of things, you'll never encounter a problem. You really won't. You probably it's very unlikely that you're writing to it so often that it's going to cause you an issue. However, when it comes to databases, database programs love to write data. They do. There's a tremendous amount of data that goes on behind the scenes of managing a database application. Even when you're not actually putting information into your database, there's the potential for a lot of other, I'll just call it administrative overhead to be going on. That can in fact mean that it's writing to the disk a lot more than you think it is. So that's one of the reasons I suggest that maybe, maybe you want to rethink how you're sharing that information between your machines. If it needs to be an external drive, use an actual hard disk. You can do what you're doing. Uh, you won't uh, really have that big of a speed impact because writes on solid state drives, write, writes on flash memory are still slower than reads. And if you're doing a lot of writing, you probably won't notice the difference if you're actually writing to an external hard drive. The other thing, of course, is to consider using a network or use the cloud or use any number of other solutions. <laughs> Just don't use this one. If you insist on using this one, then start backing up. And that's one of the things that I really do want to drive home for the more casual users of flash memory is that the single most important thing you could do when it comes to flash memory, besides just using it, is backing it up. Remember, if you've got your pictures in your camera and they're just on this one piece of flash memory, they're in only one place. Lots of things can happen. Yes, it can wear out if that's your favorite memory card. Um, I have a favorite memory card, by the way. It's a 128 gigabyte card that I have in my most important camera. Eventually, it's going to wear out. It's been years, but eventually it's going to wear out. Uh, but I back it up. I make sure that as soon as is possible, those pictures get copied to multiple places. And that same is true if you're using it in your camera, if you're using it in your phone, if you're using it in a voice recorder, regardless of what it is you're using your flash memory for, make sure that you're backing it up as soon as is practical for you to avoid not just being a victim of it wearing out, but any of another, uh, any of a number of other things that can go wrong with flash memory, with devices, with anything. Now, the other question that you may be wondering about is, well, what about SSDs? Aren't we doing like all of our work on flash memory? Isn't that writing a ton of information to flash memory? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But you'll notice one of the words that I kind of emphasized earlier is this concept of inexpensive flash memory. The, the, the little flash drive here, I've got a, an old one gigabyte USB thumb drive here. That's dirt cheap, right? That's pennies of, of uh, storage. It works. It's been around for a long time. Um, you know, it's, it'll wear out eventually. SSDs are typically significantly more expensive. Now, I'll, I'll admit, the price differential is coming down, but they are still different. They are still more expensive and they are typically larger. They tend to use different technologies on the inside. SSD flash memory has progressed to the point where I now consider it to be to, to have a long enough lifespan that the drive will typically outlast the useful life of the device into which it's been placed. By that, I mean, if you've got an SSD in your laptop, chances are you'll want a new laptop before the SSD actually wears out. The laptop will get old. 
Software will expand to require more things. You'll lose the laptop. You'll drop the laptop, whatever. There will be reasons, be it in two years or six years or 10 years, that you'll want to replace the laptop. The SSD stands a really, really good chance of still being there and not having worn out. Now, don't take that the wrong way. There are no guarantees. I don't care what's in that laptop. If it's an SSD or a hard drive, if it's new or if it's old, if it's incredibly high quality or dirt cheap quality, you got to plan on it breaking. You got to plan on it failing and failing hard. And again, I keep coming back to that means you got to be backing it up. But the good news is that SSDs, their lifespan is typically longer than the equipment you're putting them in. And thumb drives, well, they're just cheap enough to replace. For updates, for related links, for comments and more, visit askleo.com slash 2618. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.